Welcome everybody to a brand Finally. new episode oh, of it's been Mocast. A yes, it's been almost a year since we had a chat about Protection Paladin. And it is both one of our favorite tanks for both of us, oh, I can 100%, say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we played it to the death in multiple expansions and stuff. And um, it was uh, <laughs> well, uh, past due <laughs> we had to chat if, about. If, if you've been following any coverage of uh, relatively decently oh, informed Prop Paladins, as well as any opinions of ours from Prop Paladins, you might know that there's stuff to talk about. Oh, yes. And uh, we, hopefully uh, some, some hopium... To hopium. be inserted. I don't know, man. I don't know about Let's hopium. See. We have to be like super real today because there's a uh, well, hopium is not real. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and for the first time on the podcast, we do have Mr. Andy Brew. And as always, we cannot do a Prot Paladin podcast without Lincoln, prominent figure of the Hammer of Red Discord, you know, on the protection paladin side of things. But not only that, uh, we'll, we'll let the boys introduce uh, themselves and talk a little bit and then we're going to get right into the meat of protection paladin so andy lincoln welcome talk a little bit about yourself and start it off with andy because he's the newest newest member here uh hi i'm andy i'm a twitch streamer also i'm a main tank for method raid uh and i well i was the rank one prop paladin season two of uh shadowlands and uh come close a few times in a few great pushes <laughs> but yeah that's that's about me i, I mean let, let's be real people who uh, tank know who andy brew is but for the three percent who actually don't <clears> know who andy is well there you go yeah, yeah. and uh, lincoln what about you my yeah. man yeah hi i'm lincoln i am a i'm the prop paladin guide writer for wildhood so I'm, I'm in full guide writing mode as we lead, lead up to dragonflight and um i am a moderator in the hammer of this course um so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this. As I mentioned, they kind of like in the off-air yeah. chat we had. I've been waiting for this since July, since they released the talent tree. Um, <laughs> so I'm ready to dig in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. In, in all fairness, we kind of hope it's like okay, this is not the final iteration of the talent tree, right? So we're probably gonna wait for some changes. Uh, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll get to it. We're still waiting. We'll, we'll we'll get to it. I think I think there is. There is room for copium, but I, I don't think it's it's going to be anytime soon. Uh, I'm looking a little bit more further down the development <coughs> cycle. We'll, we'll get to this. Uh, as well. Depending on when you watch this podcast, this has been recorded on the 21st of October. So, because we know there is a tendency whenever we talk about a specific topic, uh, two days later, there's, there's like patches and notes and releases and fixes and buffs. And who knows if this is going to happen. But. Just for context, that's what's happening. Yeah, but hopefully, hopefully, if if things do happen, they're for the better. All right, let's get into it. So there's not going to be any particular order, or, although I know Lincoln really wants to talk a lot about uh, a lot about the stuff that, that we're going to touch upon here. So I guess the no most natural way of uh, starting this discussion uh, is with the general tree for Prot Paladin and Dragonflight. Um, yeah, I know there's there, there's I know. That Things have improved uh, in a couple of the parts. So from the first time and up until now, a couple of things in terms of pathing has improved. But well, wait, what do I know? So let's talk a little bit about the general uh, paladin tree and how it affects broad, and then we can move from there. Uh, any anybody can jump in. The general tree, um, I guess, like the good things about it recently would be um, how they've changed, like of dusk and dawn. Um, like the playstyle where you kind of want to play around either being at five holy power or zero holy power um to like constantly have both buffs um it's kind of like an interesting way to play oh well, i guess you could do it on any paladin spec to be honest with you but it's like an interesting like new kind of like way to play prop paladin um i, I guess the biggest problem with the tree is that there's still like a lot of things that are like bugged and uh oh well i guess it's with everything in general um like both trees but um uh, i think the nicest addition that they changed was the fact that spell warding is not on the general tree anymore um because that was a big that was that was something that would really cripple prop paladin for raiding especially uh not having exclusive uh access to spell warding um but um 
my kind of opinion of the general tree is I feel like there's still a few things they should kind of like shake around slash I don't like I, I would like to see buffs to Zealot's Paragon for example um but yeah I don't know also some of the pathing is still a bit wonky uh to say the least um but it's definitely better than what it was before I think uh, I don't know if you agree to that uh Lincoln pathing wise I agree like I think it's definitely better um and so I heard Bolas on the podcast when talking about the red side of things, you know, a couple like a month or so ago. Yeah. And I agree with what Bolas said almost verbatim. Um, the biggest problem with the class tree is that there is just too much throughput in the tree above the 20 point gate. So like you're talking about like things like seal of reprisal, holy ages, you know, things that are just raw damage and power character power increases. And then if you were to remove those out, so let's say Blizzard was to just cut those immediately and say, hey, we don't want them in the tree or whatever. There's just not enough talents in there, right? So they're like, the talents that they have in there are just not good. Like it's not healthy to have to pick between a power character power increase, like 4% crit and 4% armor versus do I get to divine steed in extra time or can I cleanse or blessing of sacrifice? Like I'd rather be able to pick between those things than pick between that and 4% armor. Um, and I feel like it's definitely a missed opportunity in terms of like, there's so much stuff that Paladin has had in previous expansions that they could have added back. Blessing of Kings, Blessing of Wisdom, Blessing of Might. There are Azerite traits that could have been added back. Like, remember that Azerite trait that gave speed to your group when you press horse or, you know, whatever else. Like, there's just so many ideas around utility and, like, interesting things that they could have added in. And this tree, like, I'm going to, like, this could be considered, like, hyperbole, like, for sure, but... When I look at all of the spec, all of the class trees for all of the classes, Paladin is one of the worst, like objectively one of the worst in its current state because, because it has a bunch of design flaws. So for example, like Seal of Might. So this, this is a talent below the 20 point gate that when you use Avenging Wrath, it gives you a bunch of mastery, but you can pick that talent without actually picking any Avenging Wrath talents. So like that's, that's a total noob trap. Um, like for, a, for like a player who's not like myself or Andy, who's maybe more knowledgeable, that's, that's a noob trap. Like that talent should not be there or it should be a different talent. Um, so there's just like these really like three points around divine steed. Like, why is that when death Knight got that's advanced for free? Why? Um, so it's kind of like, like I look at like what death Knight got and what some of these other tank, class, like we'll put Druid aside. Cause I think guardian Druid is like in a totally different boat than us even, um, than prop paladin. <laughs> But, like, if you look at, like, what D DK got, Prop Warrior, like, even Brewmaster, their class trees are better, um, or their, like, their core class trees are better in, like, so many ways. Um, and it's just really disappointing that this hasn't changed at all. Like, myself and others have called this out repeatedly over the course of beta for the last three or four months, and they have not changed it one bit. Um, so... It makes me really wonder, like, what is going on? What is going on there? Or is it a bandwidth issue? Can they manage this? So it's, you know, it's just, it just, it doesn't give me confidence, like right now, that they can design this system and make it, make these choices feel important. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. I think on the, the the Paladin general class tree, there was this big opportunity to make it so cool and bring in either new stuff or, or or things from the past and they just slapped the existing things that all specs had and overloaded it with a bunch of throughput. It's just a big, big shame. You know what? Uh, I can go on a limb and, and mention that the Paladin class tree could have very closely resembled the style of class tree that Shaman has. Which, uh, from from my perspective, obviously it's a sub subjective, but it definitely feels like one of the best class trees because you have very, very few throughput nodes and a lot of the utility that the class always brought 
uh, throughout the years in the game. Like Shaman gets like all the gazillion totems. And as a parallel to it, like you mentioned, we could have had all of the gazillion blessings. Not to mention, we're probably never going to have seals again at this rate, but maybe we could have had some iterations of those put into the talents, either through judgment effects or anything like that. Old style stuff that could could have came back like they did with, with the Shaman with all the, you know, poison cleansing totems and stuff like that we haven't had for years. The, that's it feels a lot of it feels like a missed opportunity so it's just a little bit of a shame yeah and I, and I agree with that like if you like if i have a rate the class trees in terms of quality shaman is one of the best like shaman is literally maybe the best class tree that they have put out um that'll be in 10.0 dragon flight and in the shaman tree they brought back poison cleansing totem they redesigned stone skin they redesigned a bunch of these buttons and they brought them back and they did a really good job diversifying it minimizing the power gains so you can actually pick between these buttons and pick between different utilities or movements or however you want to kind of customize your character for the situation and they actually did a good job of that um in this tree they do none of that and they offer me none of that and it's kind of like i look at the shaman tree and i'm a little bit envious and i actually thought about hey maybe i should be playing shaman next year i should be just i'm just gonna play resto shaman next year and just re-roll because they got a better tree than me they're gonna have a lot more fun um so yeah I, I totally agree with that sentiment that it's like they 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 totally missed the boat on this i think uh, you also mentioned something important which maybe it's a little bit naive of me to think about it but it's maybe the best explanation as well um <clears throat> The, they haven't made a lot of changes and the the way that the talent tree looks like at least in the general talent tree it looks like it's one of the most initial the more initial uh, talent trees out there that they've released on alpha and and beta in particular but the difference is that every other spec that got or class in this sense that got this got mega improvements on the class tree bar drew it and it feels like just paladin it feels like Paladin didn't change much from its initial inception, so it just, what, did they not have time? Was it, is it a problem of manpower? Is it a problem of the devs? So with this in mind, likely we might not see any, anything change very drastically until the release, but maybe in 10.1 we can see like a proper iteration of this, which is, which is kind of sucky because we go back all the way to, what is it? Seven, no, 8.1.5 or 8.1 when uh, they finally addressed Priest and Elemental Shaman in uh, BFA when they said, oh, we don't have time to do these by the time the expansion releases. And now it feels like Paladin has taken up that spot of, oh, we just didn't have time to, to do it. And that just, <laughs> nobody's happy about that. Right. And so, so the thing about that, and I'll, and I'll let it end, you know, Andy can hop in here too. Yeah, um, sure. So they made that announcement in a Q&A from the game director. The game director went on Max's stream earlier this summer and said hey priest druids you're gonna get updates shadow priests feral druids balanced druids they all got updates they have not said anything about paladin at all at during this in court entire beta we don't paladin has even doesn't even get fucking patch notes hmm. like if you look at the patch notes there are changes that are being made in the in the beta that are not being reflected in patch notes why is that like why is the communication breaking down um so yeah, like for me, like this whole thing is a, just a total failure. It, it's just very disheartening as a as a player, as a Blizzard super fan, someone who's just just loved WoW for a while. It's just like why why bother, right? I just uh, well, I can feel the passion from from Lincoln, and I'm like me for being like a main red paladin. It's the same issue. I can I can totally understand because the problem with the communication is like w why there's no there's no like explain the philosophy behind it explain why you want to do certain changes why where you want to go with this because you saw this with different specs on the forums right other other folks kind of like either like other devs that are being in charge or what have you uh actually made the the effort to talk about philosophy you know where they want to get to it you know why they're doing some changes i feel like except holy we didn't get much information at all and, and we kind of like it's a really weird feeling if we are remaining this it's like being in, totally in the dark it's like you're not okay you see like i did uh and then i'm gonna pass it over to andy i did a a, a search today on the the beta uh feedback forums on the classes and guess who had the most replies <laughs> guess what class had the most replies in the feedback <laughs> paladin it's like 80 something came right it was <laughs> like the the 
most amount of replies and feedback and, and there's you know there's folks like like Lincoln like Bolas like you know up other players as well that are are you know had posted there or would post there but it kind of feels like it falls on deaf ears for some reason I'm right, sorry Andy go ahead just one no that's that. okay so I think part of the biggest issue with the general tree is just down to the conflicting vision of like the three specs and how to make a general tree for those paladin specs um because the thing is one of the biggest problems um that they had at the start which is why i guess they gave spell warding to all three paladin specs was just that it was just an inherent buff to holy paladin and if you guys i mean well for the longest time holy paladin has been like rampant in in terms of uh, world first progress and just uh, like raiding in general um, as a kind of like almost guaranteed pick just purely because of Beacon, uh, Devo uh, and Aura Mastery and I think part of that is that they're very scared of giving too much to a spec like Holy Paladin and then that leads them to kind of like f fall back a bit, I guess, in terms of their, I, I mean, I, I assume that they, they've just been kind of like arguing a lot over how to kind of settle this. And then they didn't really come up with anything. Hence why they've kind of like moved on and done other specs instead, uh, where there's like, oh, well, other classes where there was more of a vision. Um, in my opinion, I think, that they won't really kind of like go into this too much until probably like 10.1 i would say um just like looking how it is right now uh but yeah that's my kind of like thought, thoughts on it yeah um Bell is actually an interesting discussion um so the reason from what i was told that it's in the class tree that it was in the class tree mm. is that they didn't know what to do with blessing of protection um and one of the so just a little quick little backstory for those that don't know, Blessing of Spell Warding replaces Blessing of Protection. So you couldn't actually have them both. So if you talented into Spell Warding, the Shadowlands, you would lose Blessing of Protection. And in, in order to kind of keep that functionality, they had to assume you had Blessing of Protection in order to replace it. Mm -hmm. So instead of just putting Bop in all the class spec trees, like they did with Divine Toll, right? So Divine Toll is in all the spec trees. Yeah. They put Spell Warding in the, in the class tree and what exactly happened is kind of what Andy talked about is that it kind of power creeps holy. And if you look at what they did to holy, is that holy got blessing of seasons. That's basically like a PI level button in terms of like buffing another player. Um, holy is a meta spec in terms of like, you're always going to have a holy paladin. If like, if you're raiding in a mythic guild, even in like a world 500 mythic guild, you're probably gonna have holy paladin. You're probably gonna have one on your bench or like someone that can play holy paladin. Um, so, like they are a mandatory mandated spec and that kind of like and i do feel bad for the reds because they don't they don't have anything but i do think moving it out was the right decision and what they've done with it is good but yeah like that like even that was like a like a kind of like a flawed like attempt so yeah i, I never i never f felt too comfortable seeing blessing of spell warding over there as a red to begin with I just didn't feel it was the right solution. Yeah, sure, it added for it. So, you know, a little bit of, okay, if we don't have a holy or a prot, then definitely the, this would be a huge, huge addition. Uh, but it didn't really add to anything unique. But this is not a red podcast, okay? Well, we're, we're sticking, sticking no, to but it's, it's We care about the reds too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> paladins are family, man. <laughs> it's the age-old argument that it's kind of reminds me similar to what we had with DK in uh, Nathria with uh, Anti-Magic Zone, where you just you wanted the ability, so you brought the best spec that could do it, right? Wasn't that that was unholy? Plus, unholy brought other other good stuff as well. And now with the changes to zone in the future patches, you probably would have wanted a blood decay, right? Because it scales with HP. So that you, even if spell warding was somehow justified in the general talent tree, would have always had other issues like, okay, well, which paladin spec are we bringing? Oh, holy, still the best. So I feel like. 
this might not be the best way to to address class identity into it or to to add a, a reason but maybe have each individual spec bring something good but then again you don't have what 38 raid spots for everybody anyway so yeah. it's, it's never it's never going to to be a finished argument in in that sense um at least you know from you know a reason to have somebody in a, in yeah. a raid. okay let's just uh directly talk about the fact that Avenger Shield doesn't generate holy power anymore. <laughs> I guess it's a natural and <laughs> a smooth segue. I, I thought we were going to start with that, but I was like, all right, let's talk about general talent tree. <laughs> let, let, let's just go to, I mean, I, we can talk a lot about the general talent tree, but I feel like being, being like specifically brought, I think the core issues for the spec need to be brought up uh, sooner than later. So if there's things we can, we can go always go back on the, the general talent tree. So, uh, Guys, uh, where do you stand on this uh, situation with Avengers Shield not generating holy power? Um, well, I'll go first. I'll sure. Go in. Um, <laughs> so, from someone who did a lot of high keys as Pro Paladin, I, I think it's pretty bad, especially for Mythic Plus. Um, for raiding, it's sort of like you can get around it because Avenger Shield was never really that important in raiding. Um, Especially since uh, you never used First Avenger, which was like the absorbed talent in Shadowlands, um, which you now get through what's it called, Bulwark of Order. Um, yep. But for Mythic Plus, it's it creates like this really weird gameplay because in Shadowlands um, you would always want to spam Avenger Shield as much as possible because not only did it do the most damage. But it also gave you um, an absorbed shield based on how much damage it dealt, which if you're hitting five targets is pretty significant. And then um, on top of that, uh, it used to generate holy power and uh, it would also silence mobs as well. Um, if you're like main targeting a mob in M plus and obviously interrupts are really, really important in, in Mythic Plus. So now it creates this like weird scenario because historically for Paladin, every global that is not a holy power generating global is just a bad global. Um, so in Mythic Plus specifically, when you're getting auto attacked a lot, um, you're going to have like lots of Grand Crusader procs. You're going to end up not really wanting to spend those Grand Crusader pro uh, procs instantly. Um, and it just creates this like kind of weird gameplay loop that I don't think really works. Um, or it doesn't feel good. Um, Let's just say that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I personally don't like it because um, it's going to create like a really awkward scenario where if you want holy power and you're in like a high stress scenario, you're going to press judgment instead or you're going to press uh, blessed hammer. You're going to press a different global and you could end up like holding the Avenger shield global for like a really long time, which is going to feel weird if you wanted to kind of go into any of the talents that give Avenger Shield like extra damage on AoE or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's just kind of strange, I think. I don't think it really works. Um, at least for like high keys, I don't think the playstyle really yeah. doesn't really, it's not really suited. Um, and for the most part, you know, for the longest time, Prod Paladins either like at high level or, you know, let, let's say medium level, even like, you know, small keys and stuff. They they kind of got used to the play style with, with Avengers Shield, you know, generating holy power and stuff. That was like something like really core-ish to it for at least the last couple of years. And now it will really, I know I felt really weird when, when I saw that. It was like, and I'm, I've never done like high keys on Prod Paladin, just, you know, average 15s or whatever, but it felt so weird and and clunky it's like it, it, it felt shallow it's like this is not the prod paladin i know but yeah i mean it is like very different right and obviously you shouldn't kind of like knock something just because it's different um but i, I think the play style itself is a lot of issues like the biggest issue is that the higher and higher keys you do as prod paladin um the better and better you're gonna have to get with globals the more you're gonna have to work yourself um over just spamming SOTR and that means you basically need like better uh, as good a holy power management as possible and especially in like high keys where the meta has always been 
kind of to heal the tank as least as possible so that the healer can do damage or at least that has been like that in the past it, it's gonna create like really strange kind of gameplay where i mean you want to press avenger shield so that you get stuff like what is it uh strength and adversity for like the parry chance and i i guess like it still gives an absorb so it, it's still a decent global but then it not generating holy power can like set you far behind and that can just like mess up a pool for you or well or not mess up a pool but it can just make the overall experience very negative i think um especially when it comes to aggro as well i like for example let's say you have a really hard pool and you really need to spend holy power um and then you're pressing globals like judgment or blessed hammer that's gonna like essentially decrease the amount of damage you're doing like on aoe on like five targets let's say for example um so yeah i don't know i don't don't really like it I, um i think i think you but, pointed out on on something that's that's really important since obviously um the the spec functions differently depending on the level of content that you do and uh to for for somebody that does like 15s and 20 that's not v very relevant since you don't really have to use your to use word of glory as much on yourself anymore but yeah. uh and just spamming shield of the righteous does you know it's in in shadowlands you have more than 100 percent uptime on shield of the righteous you might, might even be wasting some of its uptime and maybe that's what the mindset of it was like you don't need that much holy power gener generation but then again that just feels like it's incomplete and once you take the spec to let's say a more efficient a more uh demanding environment like high mythic plus then those issues start to come up more and yeah. more and uh like you said it just it feels it feels very cool like marcin said as well as uh, somebody that really really played prop in a lot in season two and I really enjoyed it and I took it to, to as, as, as I could. Hopping into something that I just shoot my shield and I'm like, oh, I should press my shield the righteous. Oh, wait, I'm one holy power short now. That just messes up with, with the mindset. This is, you know, talking about all oh, people who already played the spec and people who go in, like you mentioned now, they just wonder what the, the purpose of the ability is anymore. Since pretty much everything else that you press generates or spends holy power, at least in, you know, in the cadence of a normal rotation. Um, I'm not sure if they mentioned why they've made this change. Um, so I can, I'll jump in there. Go for I it. I can jump in there. Um, so I agree with a lot of what Andy said. Um, and so just to preface my comments, I have been playing Paladin on beta since July. So I basically been, I've done Mythic Plus, I've done all the raid testing, I've done all of that. So I kind of get a sense of like how this feels. And, you know, thinking back to like, so, th so they did release a blue post. If you remember back to July, there was a blue post when I got questioned about it in the blue post. And I'm paraphrasing basically says we want shield of the righteous to make you feel stronger and not to be part of your passive mitigation kit. So let's, let's, let's unpack that for a second. So to me, philosophically, that sounds like they want it to be like Legion or BFA. Like when you press this button, you have like a really high jump in your effective health. Like if you think back to Legion and the Paladins that played back then, when you pressed SO, like Shield of Righteous, you were immortal. Like there was literally nothing in the game in PVE or PVP or what you know, PVE in a raid or in Mythic Plus that could kill you through it. It's flat so, like, DR, right? Yeah, it, it was like 55% flat DR. Yeah, right. So like you're talking about like you, you press this button and you're immortal. Um and I don't think we want to go back to that. Like I think that is like a kind of like a separate discussion, but but like we so that reminds me a lot of that type of philosophy of you pressing this button and you're just really strong. Um now let's talk about like how that has expressed itself in the game itself. So I have logs from raid testing. I have logs from Mythic Plus from like doing like tens to fifteens, like just in random pugs. Guess how much my uptime on Shield of Righteous is? One hundred percent. So my question to Blizzard is: Did you accomplish your design goal? Like, what was the point of the change? If I'm still gonna have hundred percent uptime, if only to make the class feel worse. Let's think about like what Holy Power does. Holy Power gives you a sense of agency and it gives you a sense of control. You press this button, you have this resource, you can use this resource for healing, you can use it to get armor. So you can kind of like pick like, hey, based on the situation or, you know, whatever happens, like, you know, and you mentioned, hey, in high key, you got to wog yourself. That kind of gives you that control to be able to do that. 
the way they've kind of done it now is that they've taken that control away. So you're going to have less holy power, but in exchange, you're going to get these really powerful buffs. Like if you look math, math like mathematically in a spreadsheet, the 10% block you get from Barricade of Faith or the 10% parry, those are very strong buffs. Like if you do like even like math them out in terms of damage reduction gain, but you have so much less agency, you have so much less control. And I don't think that it has been worth it. Um, and I don't think that like they've made the class play worse and for what? Um, so like they didn't accomplish the goal of making Sheila Righteous stronger numerically in terms of how much damage reduction you gain. It is exactly the same. In terms of uptime, it is effectively the same. In terms of like the actual like feel and like the visceral reaction of pressing a vendor shield is actually worse. And like it makes me question like, did they think this through? Like, why didn't they just go all the way back? Like, we know that there's a model that works of like what they're describing in the blue post of hey, we want like that's basically like BFA prop paladin. Like, we know that works. There's a lot of people like myself, like Legion Prop Paladin, that love that stuff. That thought it was a great design. Like I was on the podcast last time and I talked about how great it was and how much fun it was. And they could have just gone back to that. Um, so like, so my question to the Blizzard developer who maybe who may listen to this, did you accomplish your design goal? Did you set out what you wanted to do? Like, what was the point of the change if I still have 100% shield of the right stuff time? The class plays worse and I have less control. Um, so yeah that that's yeah i don't think it's been a good change i think there is a world where like where you don't have 100 percent uptime and i think that works but this is not it so yeah. no i completely agree and like to go on from that as well is that um like my initial thought especially on alpha was no matter what even though they've made it so that it's harder to get 100 percent, you're still gonna try and get 100 percent as much as possible um, and you're going to go out of your way to take talents or like certain nodes to make you get 100%. Um, just because like when you ha don't have SOTR at all, um, you're just so much weaker. And, and they didn't really like add anything um, to kind of like counteract that. Or, and they didn't really do anything in order to make SOTR itself like a lot stronger I, f I feel like they didn't really kind of like commit hard enough to it in a way yeah and like that's definitely true like in terms of like like six like sanctified wrath that's a talent that's now available it competes with seraphim at the bottom of the class tree it, what it does is when you hit wings that gives you judgment now double generates double yeah and then you can have access to zealot's paragon which extends the duration of your wings when you press judgment so kind of like the like the the loop right now is basically just have wings up all the time. Like that's literally what the loop is. And inside wings, you're basically unkillable because you have permanent mastery, so much extra holy power, and all of that. And I just feel like it's just like what was the point of this? Like what was the goal? Did you hit your goal? Um, like I feel like we just made the class worse just because without actually accomplishing anything. <laughs> Fair enough. I did. I did uh, want to pose a question because you did mention uh, going back to barricade of faith and uh, strength and adversity, uh, crusaders resolve and so on with these types of mechanics. Because um, and uh, through their uh, blue post, uh, well, they mentioned that they want shield the righteous to to become more impactful, which I'm not necessarily opposed of. But as a current pro warrior main, it slightly takes me. In into making parallels between the two specs but their functionality is slightly different where prop paladin clearly made use over the years more of flat damage reduction as opposed to how block works um probably you know the barricade of fate for instance you get some percent block overall maybe that feels like for an average player like as myself that sounds better in aoe since in single target or in raid, that might be a little bit unreliable. I mean, it's a great pa passive to have if you're not relying on it because it's an addition to your overall survivability kit. But if it's something that you're supposed to, you know, oh, I want this because I need to survive a little bit more. How much is that 10% extra block going to uh, help you plan your, you know, your mitigation against the boss in a raid? Similarly to the parry, which is also a percent chance, uh, 
baking your survivability into into an RNG number, which feels feels a little bit awkward for a tank to have to base your survivability on an RNG. So what I want to ask you guys is, do you think this is accomplishing what they're looking into? To you know, when you press shield righteous, it's good because there are other examples that are for my opinion a little bit better what is it uh in consecration shield righteous deals more damage or stuff like that where it's just like flat but when it adds percentage it just feels a little bit weird because the only reason that warrior can make block work if essentially when it needs to is because it can take it to 100 percent so it's no longer an rng but what do you guys think of this style of mentality because it's more than in just one node and that's something that caught my eye when I played first prop Paladin when I thought before that it's just, you know, it's armor or flat damage reduction or more damage or more healing. And this is kind of not necessarily new, but it doesn't feel like it's doing what the rest of it is doing so far to keep Paladin alive. Yeah, so I don't like it. I'll just jump in here and just say I don't like it. Um, so if you think about like the number of buffs and mechanics that they have attached to a vendor shield simply because they removed the generates one holy power thing off the tooltip. You get the 10% block, you get a bunch of parry, you get an absorb shield, they put the tier bonus, you get 5% versatility on the tier bonus, Crusader's Resolve is on there too. Um, so that's like, you're talking about like four or five different unique buff effects that are attached to this button simply because they removed one line of text because you just no longer generate the one holy power. Um, and I feel like that, like, and I kind of said that I kind of alluded to this in the, the tier post write up I did for Wowhead, um, not not to plug it, but um, so what I said is that they will add enormous amounts of buffs effects simply because they removed that, and it, none of those will actually make it feel better. In the spreadsheet, it'll be mathematically better when I look at say Shadowlands Paladin Prop Paladin versus Dragonfly Prop Paladin. Dragonfly Prop Paladin is probably tankier, like straight up has higher damage reduction, higher mitigation. All of those things are going to be higher on the Dragonflight one, but it just feels objectively worse to play. Like, which one would I rather be? I'd rather still be in Shadowlands. Um, so, yeah, they they will... I don't like it. I don't think they... I don't think it's the right decision for the class. I think eventually they'll probably just go back to BFA um, or it's like some some version of non-Holy Power prop paladin because it's really hard to balance, balance Holy Power. Um, like, you need, you need a lot of it for it to feel really good. Um, so yeah, I'm not a big fan. Yeah, I definitely agree with Lincoln. Like, um, I don't know. I just think them removing Holy Power on uh, Avenger Shield just it forced them to put so many like extra buffs in order to like try and make it work. And yeah, as Lincoln said, the most important thing is that it just doesn't feel good to play, um, which for many people will be like the most important thing. Um, you know, and e even if the spec is objectively like quote unquote tankier, as Lincoln put it, um, it's still, yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely in the same boat where I would much rather play uh, Shadowlands uh, properly. Um, I mean, the only thing that they have kind of like added, I guess, that's really nice is the fact that you have more cooldowns in general than you had in. Uh, um, in Shadowlands, um, like with things like IFT, um, also perhaps getting more CDR on Guardian Asia Kings than you could before, as well as also having like a cheap death sort of Guardian Asia Kings, um, and then also still having Ardent. Although I would have liked to see the Ardent extend talent that they had from uh, from the Conduit in Shadowlands, but they didn't add that unfortunately to the tree. But, um, yeah, they, they added a, a gutted version of Resolute Defender. Yeah, they added like just the just the part where you get CDR. You don't get the like extension when you spam SOTR, uh, which definitely I don't know. I kind of like that actually, so I kind of missed that. Yeah, but, I mean, um, oh sorry. No, go, okay. go ahead, go 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 ahead. Finish the thought. No, I I, I just um, yeah. It, it feels like a bit of like a mixed vision, like not only the general tree, but also the just the prop paladin spec tree as well. Um, I think like they obviously their goal was to make Avenger Shield not uh, give holy power, and then they were going to buff the hell out of it in order to make it so that you would still press it. But 
they haven't really accomplished that in a like fun way i think um there was talk that or there was a, an idea that they they would make it so that either a talent or grand crusader itself um like grand crusaders uh, proc is when basically you parry or um um like or like uh what is it called melee attack right oh no avoid a melee attack or chance when you blessed hammer sorry um there was like an idea where a blessed hammer oh sorry uh, a grand crusader avenger shield proc would give you holy power um but the normal like avenger shield itself wouldn't give you holy power which i think could have like worked um but yeah i don't know they decided not to do that uh which was a bit strange i think because i think that could have actually helped it a lot or the play style at least um so basically what that means is every time you go into a pool your first avenger shield that you would throw out wouldn't give you any holy power but then like if you're getting like melee a lot or um you know blessing blessed hammer um whenever you get the shiny pro uh, grand crusader proc that would give you holy power when you press that which i think would have been kind of nice gameplay you know see yeah, shiny button press it you know that's the way it worked in warlords by the way um so originally in back to warlords of draenor judgment and hammer hammer righteous were the only buttons that gave holy power but you did get holy power on grand crusader um so that, that's exactly the way it worked in warlords so there was a point where it like hey yeah this is this when you get this proc it definitely makes you feel feel powerful to press this button so yeah so at least you know back then they recognized that that, that was important that would have justified the strength and adversity talent as well that gives you parry might actually even synergize really well with it because i would imagine that the void also includes parry because you're not dodging that much as a prop held in anyway yeah so yeah avoid is technically dodge parry and miss so like all those three events but like if you're talking about like in a dungeon it's mostly parries yeah but just going back a little bit to the the situation with uh, the because just listening to you guys it paints the picture where because of this removal of holy power from avenger shield now a lot of the talent tree is basically some sort of let's make avenger shield better and it it kind of it, it kind of like the ruined uh, this possibility where you see in other other trees, you know, synergies and different builds like clear different builds or um, hybrid builds that could actually work in niche scenarios. I cannot really see this much in in Prot Paladin right now. And looking at it, you see the a whole bunch of Avenger Shield uh, talent modifiers, buffs. Uh, you know, you guys mentioned it already. And it does feel that this is because there's no more holy power generated from from Avenger Shield. It, it's, it's, it's like they had like a roll of bandages, so they shot themselves in the foot to make those bandages why? work. I, mean, I think some reason. I think Lincoln Lincoln like uh, put it bluntly. Uh, was the objective um, uh, met? Like having uh, Shield of Righteous be impactful, being better, being or whatever was that? I don't think so. It's not. It's it's not there. Plus, it, it, it kind of fucked up the whole talent tree. You have like, you have like, so yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So like, so I'm not against having like fa barricade of faith or these talents in there. Like, I think those are good. To, like, in in isolation, those are good talents. Let's let's assume you know, let's assume we live in you know Twilight Zone and holy holy shield or holy power still on a vendor shield. Then those talents might be okay. But then the other talents of what I would also want is like. Hey, here's some Hammer of Wrath talents. Here's some Judgment talents. So it's like, hey, I can focus on Avenger Shield, but I can also maybe focus on Judgment. I can focus on Hammer of Wrath. It's like, hey, I can customize kind of like the the rotation a little bit, just based on you know different functionalities or things that they could add. The problem is, is that this is all that there is, right? So yes. that they have these basically, they inserted these talents in to kind of fluff Avenger Shield. And then they left it that they left it with nothing else. So it's kind of like I have no choice but to take Barricade of Faith in Mythic Plus or the Parry in Mythic Plus because there's nothing else for me to take, um, and there's nothing else that's even comparably good. So yeah, they they committed too hard to it. I think just the uh, main issue, yeah. or, or while they maybe they just had to commit to it too hard though because of yeah. um, whoever designed this like initial vision, um, they obviously thought. It's not going to work unless we add these sort of things. 
it is once again missed opportunities uh, um I'm just gonna go on and maybe have a hot take here uh but i i, I think prod paladin uh, has like judgment make i think prod paladin make 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 the most uh use out of judgment out of the old specs I, we can have an argument for Red as well, but that's usually like, you know, the, the, just the, the debuff over there. Uh, holy, okay, gener uh, holy part generator. But for Prot, uh, and, and I know Link also mentioned this in a little, a little, little feedback he gave me a little back um, uh, about Prot. Um, you, cannot, you cannot have like um, just a plenty, even if you did have the holy power, and I, I agree that the, the talent's for Avengers Shield, uh, you know, that they're great or whatever, but it feels like there's so many of them and so little on the the other stuff that a prod paladin uses. And the missed opportunity, I feel, is like Judgment should have had a couple of talents for itself as well over there. Like, how cool it would be, I'm going into fantasy land now, but how cool it would be to have, like, I don't know, a Judgment build of some some sort or something that yeah. would synergize with, with that in, in a way. It's not even like just the judgment build. Like if I look at like, like we talk about like Prod Warrior, like Prod Warrior has a really good talent oh, yeah. tree. Yeah, they have a lot of talents around Shield Slam, Thunderclap. They have Blood and Thunder as like an interaction. Like they actually have talents that change how they use buttons and how they interact and like augment the rotation in a different way. Like I don't have, I, Prop Helen doesn't have any of that. Um, like Andy brought up a really good point about the cooldowns. So that is actually a really good strength of this tree is that you have a lot of cooldown options. So like, obviously I'm working through all the guides and there's like dedicated builds you can do around cooldowns. Like, Hey, you know, you could potentially drop Ardent Defender and say, Hey, I have, I have tier now. It's a one minute, 25% DR versus say, uh, you know, a two minute, 20% DR, you know, potent potentially you can pick up I have tier instead. Hey, if, you know, that's better. Um, and then obviously more Guardian of Asian Kings, more final stands, assuming that they can fix that. So yeah, around the cooldowns, it's definitely better. Um, so, you know, trying to get back to my, I guess my original point is that put in a talent for judgment. Like there's been set bonuses around judgment. There's been set bonus, Holy Paladin, Holy Paladin, we won't get much into Holy Paladin, but Holy Paladin has more Hammer of Wrath talents in their spec tree than I do. Why is that? Like, I, I really want, like, like who, who designed this? Um, or who thought like who thought this who thought that was a good idea to give the healer spec the hammer of wrath talent over you know a kind of a mixed tank DPS spec which is what prod is so that's the problem they haven't this is this is just adding to the frustration because they're not talking they're not explaining why right this is hey guys we see holy paladin this way this is why it has a couple of more hammer of wrath synergies. Um, this is why Prot Paladin doesn't have any other synergies, uh, and, and this is why it has multiple uh, uh, Avengers Shield. Which, let's be honest, man, Avengers Shield is a kick-ass ability. I mean, just on the core fantasy of it, it's really cool. I can understand why they want to pump it up outside of the whole situation with Holy Power. Um, but so many missed opportunities. It, 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 it's amazing. Um, I think you know we can. We can go for hours and hours about all of the issues. Um, how would you guys see? You did you did mention a couple of like potential solutions. Can we go even yeah. further for, uh, on this? Do you have I don't know some some more ideas on where things should go or anything you would like to see changed or added? I, I think if they really want to commit to Avengers Shield by giving Holy Power, which is fine then I think they have to combine some of the talents in the tree with Avengers Shield baseline. So for example, like I would put like the Absorb one, Bulwark of Order. I would just like remove that from the talent tree and just add that to Avengers Shield baseline. And you could potentially do that with like a few other things as well. Um, that would be like the first step and that would like free up uh, potential things to do with like judgment or hammer of wrath as Lincoln said um, so it creates like more of a variety and then I probably would create some way of Avengers Shield giving holy power like i.e. through Grand Crusader proc or maybe even from something else um, maybe like during wings uh, Avengers Shield gives uh, holy power or I don't know something something like that um, 
<laughs> so one idea I one so one idea I've heard for that is that put a choice node with um Crusader's judgment. So turn that into a choice node and you can either get the second judgment or you can get holy holy power on a vendor shield. Um <laughs> And I don't think that's I don't think that's a bad idea because it's basically no. the same. It's, it's basically the same thing. That's a, that's an interesting idea. I like that. But I, I still think they would need to add more thing baseline to Avenger Shield or just to like free up the talent tree uh, for like more options. Yeah. So yeah, the other thing in here that people don't talk about is just the number of sheer two point talents in yeah. here. So like, if you're talking about like Light of the Titans or Tears Enforcer or Strength and Conviction. Like these are just two point talent sinks that you have to take in a lot of situations, um, and that kind of like oppressively pushes out potential ideas. Like if you look at say like the red tree, and I know Bolus has a lot of opinions on the red tree, but when I look at the red tree, ret ret retribution paladin tree, I see a lot of one point talents. I see a lot of them. Prop warrior tree, I see a lot of one point talents, um, and that allows them to get more stuff. Like as I you know as I talk about like a little bit in Discord and on Wowhead and elsewhere. It feels better psychologically, emotionally, to spend two talent points and get two unique unique things, as opposed to spend two talent points and get one one thing. Um, so, like, just get just get rid of the two point talents. Like, that would just create so much extra space, and then they just have to just add more. Um, so, yeah, and, and, I, and I agree, like, Bulwark of the Order should be in the spellbook. Like, there's some things that should be there. Like, that's, like, a, such a core thing. Like, Storing Shield. Um, so this is a talent that's on a choice node that allows Avenger Shield to hit two additional targets. And back to Warlords, this has been in the game since Warlords, Warlords of Draenor. Back then, it was a Draenor perk that you got for free. Yeah. Then they turned it into a Legendary. Then it became an Azerite trait. Then it became a talent in First Avenger, and now it's another talent. Let's make it baseline and, already, man. What the hell? Yeah, so like why why isn't that just in the spell book like baseline? Um so yeah, those like those are the types of things that are just annoying. Like, hey, we're just gonna create these things and just keep offering you in like our systems. Um, I, I think what Lincoln said is like absolutely like bang on, which that's um and it's not just pro paladin, like it's also like other specs, blood decay and like various others they should go away from this like two point node thing and just stick to one point uh, as much as possible um just because then you get more things which just feels so much better and you can have like so much more variety with like your play style and it just gives you like far more options to choose from um i, I think every every spec in the game should have that um i think yeah, and that's one that's one of the positives of the shaman tree. Like if you look at their shaman the shaman tree, they have a lot of one point talents. Like yeah. there's a lot of classes that have that. So yeah, I totally I think we're totally on the same page there. The the thing with the pretty much everything except the, the holy power and the vegetable that we discussed are issues in the talent trees that pretty much uh, you you would have found them two months ago in almost every other class. Every other class had at least one of these issues and all of these issues were definitely found in, in other classes and they were eventually fixed. So this is a little bit weird. Not to mention that, okay, uh, Soaring Shield is something that has been in the game for a while. Uh, outside of that, looking at the talent tree, there are some cool things, personally, that I, I like as a tank aficionado and a prop paladin lover, stuff like Gift of the Golden Valkyrie, which, you know, Excluding the fact that it's, I don't know, it was still bugged every time I've tested it. It's <laughs> it's an interesting mechanic. The fact that I can play Final it, Stand. It, it's and... working now. <laughs> well, that's that's a, that's a plus. We can, we can talk about the bugs too. There's 35 active bugs. Still, um, still. Bugs. but but that's what I mean. There there are a bunch of things that are actually cool because we we talk about the negatives, but there are like uh, you know you can play Final Stand with Righteous Protector right now. You can play Bastion of Light with Crusader's Judgment right now. Like some of these things that. Um, you always had to choose between uh, for the last couple of years, at the very least in the last two expansions. And now it's kind of cool. You get to have some some interactions that, that you know, you didn't have before. And that kind of adds a new flavor to the spec. So you there are some positives here, but there are also the negative bits that are just weird. Like it feels like we're playing like a totally different game. And you mentioned, because I was going to draw a lot of parallels to Pro Warrior, because these two tanks are probably more alike than any other two tanks in the game. And it feels like they're designed by two different gaming companies where Prop Warriors just made it so that it's as, it's as fun as possible. 
while Prop Paladin feels like, oh, you like this, well, you're not gonna play with it anymore. Oh, you like that one too? Well, we're gonna take that away as well. And it's creating problems for itself, especially with the Avengers Shield Holy Power stuff, that now they have to rectify it. And maybe the best example for that is Divine Toll, where, you know, initially it didn't generate any Holy Power, now it generates one Holy Power per target hit, because to compensate the fact that Holy Power isn't generated by Avengers Shield anymore. So it's like, they're shooting themselves in the foot so that they can bandage themselves with the other hand or something like that. They're creating problems to solve. Right. Uh, and it's yeah. just, it, it's, it feels a little bit weird. And this is why I'm thinking that, I don't know, maybe there's a lack of manpower there. Maybe it's whoever did Holy uh, Prop Paladin didn't have time to finish it or something like that, which is maybe, let's say, my level of copium that initial, eventually it will get fixed, but it, we shouldn't even have to be in this in this uh, state to begin with. And um, yeah, you mentioned still 35 bucks even after like two months. Oh. Yeah, so, so okay, so here, it's Sentinel. So, okay, so Sentinel is not something we've talked a lot about. Sentinel is a new talent. It is a new idea that's coming in Dragonflight. Basically, what it'll do is that when you hit Avenging Wrath, it'll give you a bunch of health and a bunch of passive damage reduction. And then over time, that will start to decay. So like you'll get slightly less over time. But as you spend holy power, you can slow the decay. So like if you play really well and are like efficient, like hey, you can keep that up for a while or let it up go for the like the max duration. Um, Sentinel has been unplayable, unplayable since July. So like since they put put talents into the game, it's been not yet implemented. And then when it is implemented, it's so buggy you can't even play it, and you still can't play it um because it doesn't intera interact with righteous protector so like nobody knows how it, like nobody has played this nobody knows how it really works or like kind of how to use it like optimally or anything like that and for me that's kind of like a microcosm of like the entire tree is that like they have some cool stuff here like you mentioned golden valkyr golden valkyr just thinking back like that was a that was a legendary chess piece in legion and yeah, it's really cool, like as an idea, as a concept. But the problem is, obviously, as a legendary, you can only equip like one or two of them. You're probably not going to equip that over something like you know the legs or you know the the, the Farron legs or whatever. Um, now that it's a talent point and the opportunity cost is less, it's definitely a lot more powerful and it's really strong in Mythic Plus. You know, you're talking about like two minute guard innovation king cooldown cooldowns, which is really good, like really strong, and you can pull around. And then you know, obviously, the cheat death element or the the, the kind of the cheat element of it. Which basically makes you super safe when you fall low, low, and they buff the health threshold. So now it procs at a higher health threshold. So like even in like prog rating, you're probably gonna at least put one point in it. Um, yeah, so it's a very good talent, and there's some really great ideas in here. But the bugs have just killed this in some ways. Like I, I there's there, like there were weeks I literally just couldn't test specific builds. It's like, hey, I can't use this talent. It doesn't even work. Like Resolute Defender didn't even work. Um, so yeah, the bugs have killed us. Um, yeah, Sentinel right now doesn't work with uh, right, the righteous. purpose. Righteous protector. Yeah. Question of light. Well, yeah. Yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of things that I don't worry with it at all. Yeah, like inner light, for example. This was an Azerite trait, and the story behind the Azerite trait is actually also interesting. I can get into that too. But this was an Azerite trait that nobody picked in BFA, but it worked fine. It was bug free. It hasn't worked either. Like the damage component has not worked since July. Um, so like there's these, just these things that just, it's just been really buggy. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know if it's like manpower or what, you know, you know, what have you. So, but yeah, like kind of the piggyback on your point flame is that, yeah, there are some positives in this tree. Golden Valkyrie is a really good addition. The cooldowns, I was not necessarily a fan of bringing back IF tier, but like, hey, seeing the bigger picture, hey, it kind of fits into the bigger picture. Um, the fact that they kept Bulwark of Righteous Fury, totally big fan of that. Or, you know, so like there are some positives here, but like Holy Power, not on Avenger Shield. You know, some of the lack of talent diversity in terms of rotation customization. Um, you know, just the general bugginess and talent quality for like, kind of keep things down like kind of they detract from the positives um so the tier set as well isn't yeah fantastic yeah the tier the tier set is not it, it got buffed it's better it's better you're gonna you're basically, basically perma five percent burst is what it is um so 
Is is uh, Bul- Bulwark of Righteous Fear? Does it work? Because last time I tested, yeah, it, it works now. Yeah. It works now. They fixed yeah, it this week. They, they literally fixed it. Sorry. Yeah, fixed it. This they fixed it this week. Oh right, because for yeah, the longest days, time the you, couldn't, you couldn't see it. Actually, the, the, well, well, it's not the only example. Obviously, uh, quite quite a buggy talent tree. Um, out of out of uh, a lot of them, uh, I don't know if there's like, has there been any any other spec? that has been this buggy or with this many talents not working? I cannot think of anything. We covered a lot. Nothing for this uh, this uh, long amount of time. And I think Propeldon was the buggiest spec that they've put on Alpha. I think it was in Alpha, right? The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, was uh, midway through Alpha. It was the buggiest stuff. Oh, I had like permanent uh, Garden of Ancient Kings. That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and yeah, yeah, like instantly well. reset your cooldowns, instantly reset. So here, here's one bug. Like this is like sp- like as spaghetti as it gets, right? So like like the meme in the community is that like, hey, the spaghetti is like, because it just like the code underneath the, in the game is a mess. So the resolute defender talent, when you spend three holy power, you reduce the cooldown on divine shield by one second. So like, hey, I press SFTR, I have one second reduce on Divine Shield. There was two weeks in the beta that it would instantly reset the cooldown on Divine Shield when you pressed Judgment. Like, not even connected to the talent itself. Um, So like, the level of spaghetti on this spec has been... Like, Grand Crusader, which has been a proc, and I I understand like, uh, like they did some work on the code for Grand Crusader, is what I've been told, and that's why it's kind of like, not been, like, working as well. Um... But like Grand Crusader has has barely worked for like three months. Um, so yeah, the level of spaghetti in this spec, and this is the buggiest I've seen Prop Paladin. I've I've been like playing Prop Paladin, like kind of like it was kind of like an alt in Cataclysm until I kind of like more more mained it um, later on. But this is the buggiest I have seen this spec in like twelve in the twelve years that I've kind of been playing it. Um, so yeah, this is this is just yeah not good. Definitely says a lot. <laughs> I mean, oh man, it's uh, it's weird to say the least. Um, and I, I can understand a lot of folks' frustrations uh, with with Paladin in general. Holy is not looking hot. Red is not looking hot, and and Prot is not looking hot either. But I'm just gonna go on a limp and ask you guys. Just I I I I got the vibe completely. But okay, let's say. Uh, they fix all the bugs because like i don't really believe they're gonna do big changes they, they the will they will not fix all the bugs okay yeah, so, some of them they will not some of them let's let's just how would you see where would you see prot paladin in season one would you see it on in progression in any i'm not talking world first talking let's say let's say top 500 or whatever would you see it in high keys would you see it in in progression in the state that it is with a couple of bugs, let's say, ironed out, not all of them? I mean, if you compare it to some of the other tanks and how they're looking, I would say no. You wouldn't really see it. I mean, you might see some super diehard like, fans of the spec. Um, they've been playing like me. Forever. Yeah, they, they, they might play it. <laughs> Hello. But, um, I don't think it will be a popular spec one. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so so one of the things that's kind of overhanging this discussion is like the strength of some of these other tanks like yeah like prop warrior is very strong right now brewmaster does a lot of damage and people say like oh that's bugged or tuning you know like there's just other tanks that you probably rather be right now um even with the fixed bugs but i think the spec has potential at least in mythic plus you know i've been doing testing out doing a lot of keys and testing i have 70 percent block in testing that's higher than season one of shadowlands i have 30 percent parry in testing <laughs> 100% shield right just up time in testing, at least in Mythic Plus. So I think in Mythic Plus, the spec has potential, assuming that they can fix the bugs and, you know, there's, you know, they bring down Prop, prop Warrior needs to be nerfed. Um, so assuming they nerf Prop Warrior and they do some tank tuning across the board, I think it could be good in Mythic Plus. In terms of like the like rating, like it's definitely not going to be in World First. Like you're probably, like Andy's right. probably not going to play it. Don't see Limit or Echo playing it at all. Um, but like, could like the average guild is it better probably better than demon hunter for testing better than some of these tanks probably I, I i i think it could be good and i think it could be okay like like mid-tier on the raid it's not gonna be the best tank but it's not gonna be the worst um so it's probably gonna be closer to like where it was and maybe like season three 
where it wasn't like it wasn't like giga op um but like hey like if you enjoy playing it there's nothing that's going to really get in your way to 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 get like ce or hall of fame or whatever you want it still obviously has like potential from the fact that it is a tank that has an immunity um and technically two immunities um and the last boss hasn't been like tested at all um so i don't know maybe copium uh, <laughs> i mean let's be real it, it, well i wouldn't say never say never but um yeah, yeah I, it, I i do doubt it's uh like kind of playability I, th I think we can we can safely assume that if there's going to be like major changes to the talents to the potential solutions you boys brought up that's going to be in 10.1 i don't think there's yeah exactly yeah i don't i don't yeah 10.1 um or even like 10.05 so oh yeah. well i mean i would be hopeful for that but more realistic I, I, my expectations are for 10.1 i don't want to be disappointed again yeah, it yeah. doesn't doesn't feel like they are at, at this rate unless they have been cooking some stuff in the oven for like the last two months and they haven't put anything out in week because we actually have been surprised a bunch of times with stuff that we said like oh they're not gonna do it like the probably biggest outlier right or the biggest elephant in the room right now is the fact that what is it two three weeks ago they said they're done designing and then there's just tuning but they keep designing actually certain specs still are getting redesigns on certain talents so they're at least more flexible and i hope that this rubs off on on prop paladin i don't know see because i don't i don't want pro word to be nerfed mostly because <laughs> if it's, it's gonna get nerfed if it's like I uh, for you. <clears throat> yeah. yeah i know but i'm, I'm saying like in, from a conceptual perspective it can actually pull the other tanks ahead because it's it's really fun to play and bar some probably a little bit obnoxious tankiness that it's probably a little bit too much for the first season of an expansion. I can admit to that, but it is a, a good example to to follow, which is maybe something that you know we can that can rub off on prop Elden. Because let me be honest with you, man. Um, as as a, a fan of a tank, having stuff like Final Stand and Righteous Protector that I can both pick at the same time and not have to have the discussion of you know Final Stand is only good like once every five minutes or once every three minutes and something um can bring some like amazing niche and like amazing flavor to paladin as a tank and stand aside from like all the other tanks and it can probably become one of the coolest tanks in the game the potential is there and it just feels feels so sad that um uh, they can do it with with prop warrior and because you know they're more like than other tanks but they're like it's like right there let's tell you man 10.1 10 10 is going to be prop paladin patch i'm telling you that's it um, i mean like like just taking a step back on even a prop warrior they power creeped the crap out of prop warrior so they got spell block like obviously not prop warrior broadcast but they got spell block they got every single legendary that you can imagine on prop warrior is now a one point talent in their tree so you can literally combine them all they got the aoe interrupt they got they had the death grip leap in there for a while like even that they had skull banner in there for a while so like when you like compare like hey did was prop paladin designed by a different person yeah it, it looks like it was it looks like it absolutely was and that that prop warrior designer probably took a lot more risks i think for for people who like play prop paladin out there who are probably like like worried and thinking oh i'm gonna have to wait till 10.1 um i think the only thing that could possibly happen at this stage for there to be like any hope is if Blizzard literally announced like tomorrow that they were gonna delay the expansion, um, mm. which they did do in uh, last expansion uh, for Shadowlands. But um, it doesn't look like they're gonna do that this time. They're just gonna go full steam ahead. But I don't know. Never know. M maybe. <laughs> maybe they it's might do. Strong catch. Um, yeah. And uh, in which case they'd have more time to fix like a lot of the issues. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see, I guess. Yeah, but what about you, Lincoln? In, in, any closing thoughts or something really um, spicy? I, I feel like in terms of prop palette and specific stuff, I feel like I covered what I need to cover. Like in terms of communicating, hey, this Avenger Shield thing maybe hasn't worked out the way they thought it would, or 
this talent tree is maybe is not as good as they think it is, or you know, the class tree is pretty bad. Um, in terms of like just generally thinking about Dragonflight, I think my closing thought or closing opinion, and I don't know, like I remember you guys had the, those breaking the meta or breaking the WoW episodes with like Vandal and all of them. Yeah. And if you do one on talent trees, I absolutely want to be on it, like the concept of talent trees, because <laughs> I feel like this has been such a failed experiment. Um, and I, I think ultimately they will go back to way like the mop talents or like Shadowlands talents because it was such a much better system in terms of like, hey, you have actual like choice. Like think about like the number of like stat nodes that are in here that people are just going to feel bad about picking all of the mandatory talents that people are going to feel bad about picking. Um, and the system is kind of like on a house of cards in, in some of those respects that that they're going to get a lot of negative feedback from a lot of people because a lot of people just probably haven't seen what's in the beta you know a lot of people don't watch twitch a lot of people don't watch andy yeah, or you know or in the discord so they're probably thinking like why do i need to spend a point on on you know grand crusader again why do i need to spend a point on you know morrow rend for a death knight again why do i need to spend a talent one of my one of my 30 rare talent points on that um so like a lot of people are gonna that's like a, a really bad feels bad and i think a lot of people are going to give negative feedback to that and blizzard's course correction is going to start to remove some of those things and then you remove those then you remove the passive stat nodes and then you remove the the the, the passive damage reduction and the passive healing and then what system do you have you basically have mob talents um so i think that's kind of like where they're going to go back to anyway like basically like basically after iteration and all the like the feedback and if you have an episode like that that kind of analyzes that, I absolutely want to be on it. Oh yeah, well, then it's, it's going to happen for sure, my man. Spicy. I mean, uh, you mentioned oh, that, man. I was there from transitioning from Wrath to Kata. I, I I remember the the the, the forum posts and the the, the chatter about uh, the talent points, the, the boring talent points, and the uh, the um, streamlining of them, and eventually getting to map. It's going to be de definitely going to be an interesting um experiment moving forward uh to other expansions to see how they further add to this because it already looks uh, uh you know a lot to take in and uh, i don't know I'm, I'm not gonna go too far uh but yeah i think uh, a podcast dedicated to the concept of talent trees and how it but i think the most fair would be to have a podcast like that um uh, maybe a little bit later further down the expansion to to see some, you know, some some rounding up, like okay, let's see how this evolved into I don't know, maybe two major patches or you know, two seasons, something like that, so we can have like a, a clear image, right? Because now, 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 yeah, now, now we're first guessing. But yeah, now, exactly. Later, we can actually have all the. Oh yeah. Well, Hopefully, yeah. that would be at a point where prop building can be considered. <laughs> yeah, we can, have, it can be considered of, as good as shaman. In terms of design, because, because talent, there's talent quality. there are plenty of examples where all of the issues that you mentioned with the talent uh, talent issues are not present in other specs. So it's possible. This is just not consistent across the board. Yeah, yeah. One of my biggest issues actually with the spec talent tree is the uh, off healing. Um, which is that to get um, Hannah the Protector. You have to commit really hard in order to actually get it. So you have to put like uh, two points into a light of the titans in order to be able to, uh, and then and then put a point into hand of protector in order to be able to actually off heal. Which I don't know, just feels. I mean, not only do you sacrifice a lot for that, but um, as someone that played like, a lot of propellant and keys, I was part of like the big niche as well, or one of the biggest strengths was. The ability to like off heal people um and do it like efficiently as well because um most of the times when you healed someone who's at like 20 percent health because of the way hannah protector works that was like almost a full heal um on like a party member um so i don't know it definitely feels a bit weird that in a way they've like kind of attacked that play style um or that way of playing prop paladin uh, also on top of that is the fact that you know as we talked about they have less holy power or well because of what happened to avenger shield um not giving you holy power you then have less time in general to work well um so yeah i don't know the, the off healing is definitely gone completely downhill um which i would like to see them somehow address i, I think they need to like 
reshuffle the talents to make that possible though. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's not great because I mean, if I you mean, think about prop paladin, you're always thinking about. I mean, first you think about the utility, but off healing is like one of the biggest things that you think about, right? Um, and their off healing is going to be like abysmal without hiring a protector. Yeah, and the way that tree is structured, you're probably skipping it. Like you're yeah, going to be yeah. skipping it in mythic plus because you're probably going to go right towards. You, you're going to get the parry and then path down to crusader's judgment. So you're not even going to like. You, you can't even get it. Exactly. Like for, and it's going to probably most likely be the same in mythic rating as well, where you're going to feel forced to skip it um, just for your own survivability benefits, just because there's so much good stuff that you would end up not having. Uh, which yeah, which is very toxic, I think. Uh, yeah, like why, why isn't that baseline? Like that should be something that should be baseline or like yeah, very accessible yeah, yeah. in the tree, right? So I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I, and I didn't mention that either. Um, that like the, just the reduction on holy power just kills the, kills one of the niches, especially in Mythic Plus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think like uh, for for this at least for Hand of the Protector, yeah, uh, uh, talent shuffle. Uh, I'm guessing Andy maybe probably move it a little bit more accessible, more on top to not to I not mean, commit can, this hard to to be able to get it. You can uh, put it instead of Consecration Flame, which I'm looking at is like why is that even a thing? That sound that that feels that's a one pointer, and then you go into two pointer into Light of the Titans, which maybe Hand of the Protector wouldn't even feel half as bad if Light of the Titans would have been a one point investment if you do want to have that there. Yeah, and it's and they've nerfed it a bunch too. Um, so they they attach and this is actually something I did want to mention also. So they attach the increased effect when you have a periodic effect to it over the course of beta, and the reason they did that is because they nerfed holy shield or they changed holy shield so it does no longer works on magic dots so like taking magic damage so like if you think about, about a boss like rigalon back in sepulchre the first ones most of his damage is actually ticking magic dots and if you would look at a log you're blocking you have a lot of chances to block that or reduce the damage through holy shield at least in shadowlands with the change you wouldn't you wouldn't have that that chance anymore so the part of the reason that that effect is on there is because they made that change, right? They had to buff Light of the Titans, or they had to buff Paladin Mitigation against those effects. And then they buff, then they changed Mastery. So one effect that they added to Mastery is that as long as you're in Consecration, you have a chance to roll a block on a magic dot. So as I kind of talked about, and I asked the question, you know, with the Avenger Shield change, did you really accomplish your goal? You basically changed holy shield to remove this functionality and, and i know they made some positive changes to holy shield now it's actually recorded as a block in the combat log which is better and you know they it's now consistent with other block mechanics so like those are better for the game in terms of consistency and what expectations are but why isn't it still on holy shield like did you actually make the class better um by tethering them more to consecration tethering them because like you can't block magic dots if you're not in consecration right and if you think about a boss like sire in phase three you're not in consecration a lot of the time like you're not in consecration a lot of the time like if you get shattering blast on jailer which is like you have to run out to the pillar break the pillar and then you're running back in to fight jailer again guess what you're not going to be in consecration you're not going to be able to block shattering shattering blast ticks um and pre-nerf those were actually pretty lethal like uh in some situations so yeah, like, I, like, did they accomplish what they set out to do when they made those changes? Did, was that the right thing? Um, and to kind of just like piggyback that into like consecration of flame, um, just to kind of like dig, like dig into that talent. And so the increased duration is actually good. I think one of the problems with Shadowlands prop paladin was just simple GCD pressure. And when we I talked a little bit about, about this on the last time I was here, is that as damage intake went up. The negative, there was a negative pressure on your, the amount of the quality of your GCDs. By increasing the duration or giving the option to increase duration on Consecration, you kind of sort of ease it because you can delay your recasting of Consecration by two seconds in favor of potentially using a Holy Power GCD or using Word of Glory or something else. So I think from a quality of life perspective, that talent is actually really good. Um, the but I generally agree that, like, hey, Hand of the Protector should be more accessible. Light of the Titan should be one point talent. Uh, so, 
Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, I guess the question of the day, and who knows, maybe you're going to put this in the title of the podcast. Did you accomplish anything? <laughs> 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 this is to, to make it like it's, it's 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 like I think it's the most valid uh, question out of the whole of the episode uh, dedicated to Prod Pilot. Then uh, okay, uh, you you the, the, like you can imagine you know the dev team or whatever people who are in charge of class development or whatever they have like a little board there. So okay, what do we want Prod Pilot to do and have and whatever? They have tick 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 this, and then you have Linkle coming in. So boys, did you accomplish this? Well, <laughs> they blindfold an intern, give him a dart, and is like, miss, hit something that we're gonna accomplish with Prod Pilot. And yeah, and that's that's what we have. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's generally like how design works, right? Like, and like not even in just in games. Like, I work in advertising, and when we design, like you know, advertisements, hey, it's like we have strategic goals that we want to accomplish with the ad. They had to have strategic goals of what they want to accomplish with Prop Paladin, yep. and based on what I have played in the game, based on seeing what's seeing what's in the game with my own eyes, I have to question: Did you accomplish your goals? And I would say no, they did not. Yep, pretty much. But hey, um, there's there's been a lot, and um, I guess you know it has been a more uh, quote unquote negative episode, but I would say it was warranted. Uh, and critical you know, episode, uh, critical, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the critical, uh, a mass critical episode, uh, but 100% warranted. And uh, it's it, there's no hiding behind the bush here, you know, it, there's lots of glaring issues with with Prot Paladin, and it's just sad because it, it, you know, it had you know good times in, in Legion and BFA and Shadowlands, but I don't, I don't really get why it had to be butchered like it, it has been, and yeah, we we kind of understood why uh specifically you know we're looking at the general tree and then looking at a couple of issues the older i think like uh, well, the major issues just flirt out out of the fact that avenger shield doesn't generate holy power anymore and there's missed opportunities we covered all of those but yeah. hey uh first of all if you want to uh check out andy brew or lincoln you're gonna have all of the links in the description if you're listening to this on you know spotify itunes or whatever you're listening to can go out and go ahead and check the YouTube video as well on uh, youtube.com slash mocast and they're gonna have all of the information uh, uh highly recommend checking the boys out also if you're a paladin aficionado the discord hammer of wrath uh all things paladin over there Lincoln is also there pretty active as well um yeah I guess uh we're kind of rounding it's, it up it's it's pretty good thank you guys for uh for thank agreeing you. to uh to do this it's been uh it's been a long time in the making and uh hopefully we're gonna meet again and do another in, podcast in better and times in, in better times yeah. right yeah we'll we'll come back to review the 10.1 yeah, preview yeah, that yeah. they released <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting discussion oh, i man. bet i bet but yeah we really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time and uh just laying out your thoughts and uh uh all all all, all for the love of the the prod paladin because uh, at the end of the day uh, the frustration and the you know the the criticism or whatever comes uh, from a place of passion and love, and we just want you know the 100%. game to feel good and uh, the right. we love to pay. Yeah, yeah, so. it, yeah, exactly. Like we have the same. Like Andy and I have the same goal at Blizzard. We want a fun game, a yep. fun class. We want all classes to be fun. We want all people to have fun playing WoW. Yep. But kind of like the way they've executed it in the game is just it just doesn't add up. Yeah. Yep. Hence, why we do these things here that we do. And, uh, yeah, chats and all you, that. Dev, that is probably <laughs> listening, maybe Hopefully, not. Uh, maybe tell your friends. Yeah, it's, uh, somebody, somebody, <laughs> come on, just put this out, out there. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for listening, for uh, watching, and uh, we shall uh, catch you all uh, probably in uh, one week or two yep. with a brand new podcast. Um, do we yeah. know? Yeah, just we. I have, I have a couple uh, in, in the chamber. Probably. Let's see if we can um, get all the people to align with their schedules. That's like the biggest hurdle with these things. Yeah. All right, everybody. Bye bye. Take it easy. Bye. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.